to get out to go look at them? When you see them like that, you wonder how they've survived. No, you can get out if you want. Okay. Hey all, welcome to the second installment from the New Mexico documentary trip that we took. Uh, as you just saw, those adorable uh, scaled quail are one of the number of species of birds that you can see down in this area. I don't know what it is about quail, but I just find them adorable. I wish, though, that they were a little bit easier to film. And we saw them, uh, the two different species, a number of times down there, but almost never managed to get any really good shots of them because they're just off the road and gone before you can even get the camera out. Our third day down in New Mexico started off with, uh, after the birds of course, a hike down through a desert wash near Albuquerque, or not Albuquerque, Santa Fe, excuse me, uh, where the first thing that we saw right out of the car and one of the most common things you see all over the state was the uh, whiptails. This species here is a uh, plateau striped whiptail which is extremely common in the area, very similar to the little striped whiptail which has a bluer color to the side of its body near the belly. Uh, it's often really tiny details that actually split these species apart visually, and so you really need a field guide or a key with you to actually tell them apart in the field. Alright, looks like one of the uh, race runners down here. Just chilling. And of course, the other exceedingly common lizard is the ubiquitous uh, prairie and plateau lizards. This being the southern plateau lizard, depending on who you talk to, a subspecies of the eastern prairie lizard, or a species of its own. Either way, these guys are all over the place, really variable in color, and if you watch the previous video in New Mexico, uh, it's a good example of just how brilliantly colored the males can be. At this time of year, of course, if you watched the previous video, you know this is the time of year when uh, all the monsoons start coming through. There's a lot of rain that's coming into these areas, so all the cacti are in bloom. And at this time of year, of course, it's early summer. The ubiquitous summer friend is starting to show up. The ever either beloved, if you're like me, or absolutely hated insect, the cicada. Got one of our old friends, the cicada, out here. These guys can't do a whole lot to you. Oh, calm down, dude. This is a really pretty one, too, with these orange and black colors. Probably imitating one of the bees or wasps out here so that other organisms don't prey on him. But these guys are probably a major food source out here for a lot of animals, particularly the birds. And we'll probably see, as soon as I let go of his wing, he's probably going to fly off. Let's see. Or... It'll just sit on my finger. That works too. Cicadas are part of what are known as the true bug family. These are insects with sucking mouth parts and they're usually uh, adapted to living on uh, different plants, species, and uh, feeding off of the sap or uh, other compounds that you find within the plants. There's a handful like assassin bugs that do feed on other animals, but these guys are harmless. They feed on the xylem of the plant which means they don't get a whole lot of nutrients, so it takes a long time for them to mature. But while the most famous cicadas to most people are the um, 13 or 17 year cycle cicadas that you find in the eastern U.S., most areas of the world have at least one, usually several species of annual, often called dog day cicadas, that you have a generation come out every single year and they are an extremely important food source for a lot of the wildlife in the areas that they live. We were trying to catch one of these guys doing their territorial head bobbing displays. Unfortunately, it proved to be a bit of a uh, task. Uh, it took several tries before we finally found one that would do it while on camera. It was doing it. Okay, I'm just catching his head bobbing. 
Another one of the beautiful flower species that was in bloom in the area were uh, one of the Indian paintbrush species. There are a number of species of this semi-parasitic plant all across the U.S. They like to uh, feed on hosts like uh, woody vegetation. And unfortunately, I don't really know how to tell the different species apart, but there are several dozen across the U.S. Uh, Nathan also managed to get a, a couple photos, our first sight of what would be many, of a beautiful butterfly known as the Morning Cloak down here, and also a visitor to one of the cactus flowers, a little uh, native bee species doing pollinating. Now, the native bees are the ones that we should be concerned about. They are the ones that are really at risk of extinction across the U.S., across the world, uh, both due to various pesticides and development, as well as competing with the non-native, and in many cases actually invasive, European honeybee that everyone thinks we should be saving. After heading up through the wash for a while, we eventually figured out it was about time to start uh, heading back because we were running low on time. On the way back, though, we started to find some really cool uh, natural behaviors that we were able to record among some of the whiptail. I wonder if he's found an old cicada shell and thinks it's still an alive insect. Surely syrup it was edible if you would have eaten it by now. He does not appreciate being judged. <laughs> Mr. Whiptail never did figure out how to get the uh, cicada down, so we kept moving and left him to his little puzzle. Uh, a little ways down we found a spotted toey bouncing around in the uh, weeds. This is a species that is supposedly common up where I live too, but I never see them, although they were everywhere down in this part of New Mexico. Now, <laughs> we've got ourselves a little shorthorn lizard here. He's adorable. He's got some lovely little sandstone peachy colors on his back. There's, oops. Oh, dude, come back here. Don't run away yet. So there's three or four species that live out here. And uh, this one, you can see why he's called the shorthorn lizard, because he's just got barely his little horns right on the back of his head. The other species usually have a much more impressive crown of spines. Now, there is another species that might be down here, the round tail horn lizard, that I could be confusing him with, but I'll double check. But all these guys, and there goes a whip tail, but <laughs> all these guys are almost specialist ant eaters. That's about all that they will actually eat out here. So usually when they're um, out hunting, they will go and they'll perch up right next to an ant trail or right on the mound of an ant nest and just pick off hundreds of ants at a time before they're filled. And a little fun fact that a lot of people actually probably know about these guys is that if they get really riled up uh, and are really defensive, they will actually collapse blood vessels within the corners of their eyes and spray bl blood out of their eyes to deter predators. So, I'm rather happy that this guy is not feeling 
uh, so scared as to do that. But he's just kind of letting us take a quick look at him. And so this is the first horned lizard I've seen in several years to, too, so pretty happy to see him. Believe it or not, this species actually ranges all the way from Mexico up to extreme southern Canada. And they are supposedly found around the front range, and I've seen them once near where I live. However, they're rather uncommon across a lot of the areas where they're found. And so it's always a treat to find these guys. Uh, you can tell the difference from this species compared to others, again, by the relatively short horns that they have on the back of their head, which are separated by a relatively deep notch right on the back of the head. And unlike the round tail horn lizards, these guys have those kind of spiny fringe scales on their sides, which you can see. The round tail horn lizard doesn't have those whatsoever. So they're actually pretty easy to uh, tell apart. Uh, most of them are fairly similar in coloration. They have these sandy, dusty brown colors, sometimes a little bit of red or orange or pink in there. Uh, a few blotches of darker color, sometimes almost solid pale color. But otherwise, generally small, flat, sandy colored lizards that just kind of look adorable when they're running across the sand. There you go. All right, and here we go. Off you go, dude. Run away. Up into the rocks. You're supposed to run. Go. Oh, there we go. He just blends right in. Looks like a rock running across the ground. Well, I got at least three years worth of screams saved up, so why not? With time running low, our last find down here was this big adult male fence or plateau lizard, and then we had to head back up to the car. Uh, this was our last period up in northern New Mexico, and from here we headed south, watching the storms build across the mountain ranges as we headed south. We were hoping to stop by in the uh, Sacramento Mountains to find the other salamander that was in the area, but unfortunately uh, fires and closures uh, kind of screwed with that idea. So uh, last minute change, we headed to a different but so much more beautiful place. The intended plan to go up into the Sacramento Mountains to find the other salamander also failed due to the uh, closures that are throughout the entire state. So our killing time before we go out road cruising towards the south is visiting. Up here, where it's really windy, at the top of the dunes where we can see from one mountain range out across, all the way across, and there's a Nathan. <laughs> White Sands National Park is part of one of the largest deposits of gypsum sand and actual gypsum sand dunes in the world, created by an ancient dried up lake nearby the mountains and hemmed in by the two mountain ranges to help build up those dunes. If you've never been there before, allow me to share with you this uh, photo reel real quick, demonstrating just how beautiful this landscape is, constantly changing constantly uh, under different atmospheres from beautiful blue skies to rich storm clouds playing uh, light and shadows across the sands to um, if you've never been I especially recommend some of these summer full moon uh, walks that they do where you get to go into the park late at night to see the sand dunes underneath moonlight. The wildlife here, both flora and fauna, are also particularly special. Animals that are adapted to the white sand, so they're actually paled out compared to their relatives, we'll get to that in a bit, to the plants that are adapted to these high gypsum levels, which can be actually toxic to 
for a lot of other plants, but these are perfectly adapted to this environment. Wild Nathan in his natural habitat. On top of the dunes. And out photographing things. Say cheese! Alright, that's good. I'm not sure how, but despite having been here a number of times when I was younger, I have never seen one of the park's most famous uh, inhabitants, the bleached earless lizard. This is the same species as the lesser earless lizard that's found all across a lot of the Great Plains in the southwest elsewhere. However, this is a particular population that is endemic to the White Sands region and within the past seven to 10,000 years has developed very rapidly this unique, very pale, washed out coloration to blend in with the sand dunes. These guys are actually pretty much everywhere in the sand dunes if you know where to look. Before, I was always playing up on the dunes with my family. Now, though, since I was down here specifically looking for wildlife, we were poking around in the patches of grass and yuccas that live in between the dunes, and this is where these guys thrive. And it's kind of funny, these guys, though they blend into the sand, uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot that really eats them out here, because yes, you will find rattlesnakes and perhaps birds of prey, but they're not very common out in the dunes, so these guys are actually one of the largest creatures that are found within the main dune complex. And if you know where to look, they actually stand out pretty well because there's these little dots running around and once they stop moving, they have those brilliant black blotches on their sides that stands out against the rest of their white coloration. Got a video? Alright, we're going to hold this guy very gently. My first and only ever bleached earless lizard. They are endemic to this part of the world too. You'll find them nowhere else. Very uniquely adapted to these very pale sands. So, it's an adult male too. He's got the hemipenes bulging out here and he's probably in breeding colors right now. Look at that. All right, so we'll let him go here. After finding that guy, we were in high spirits and so uh, just decided to enjoy the dunes for a little while longer, climbing up on top and just playing around, having fun, looking at the environment as the clouds are going by. I cannot stress enough just how beautiful this place is, so I've got a few more photos to share with you here to enjoy. Um, the temperature out here while we were out and about was actually almost 95 degrees. But with the uh, wind blowing by and the storm clouds moving past, it actually didn't feel all that hot at all, so it was quite enjoyable. Now, you can go down here uh, at other times of year during fall and winter when it's actually relatively cool out, and for those who can't tolerate the heat quite as well, that might be a better option. But it's during summer, of course, when the wildlife is the most active out here. All right, don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a second earless lizard down here. Right at the base of the brush there. Oh, he moved, grabbing some insects, I think. Bobbing his head. Very cool. Actually, this might be a female. Yep. <laughs> he is 
success. Can you look at that? Just a second. Oh, this is also a male, I think. Cool. Another male visit found and caught. All right, we got a second one here. He's actually even paler than the other one. Look at that. All pudgy. Very well fed out here. Beautiful. All right. Here you go, dude. Ready? Run! I said run. Come on. There you go. Zoom! but there's a couple of babies right there. Tiny little earless lizards. There was one down here, there's one still up top. Oh, I see it. He's coming around the corner. Okay. Where'd he go? He's right in, he's right under there. Oh, I see him. your foot. Of course he does. Shut up. I'm kind of distracting. Oops. Well, where's the other one at? He's right here. Where is he? Oh, I see him. Yeah. Okay, you go. He's got some lovely colors too. Whoops. Let's turn that around. Oh. He came right between your hands. He's over here. It was so close. Walk that way, yeah. Buddy, how are you? Distract him. Oh, nope. Don't move. Or move a little bit. Yes, I know how okay. I've done this for enough years. <laughs> Hold on, don't come closer. Oh, I flipped him. It's right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Right where your left hand is. No, it's he's under my right hand. It's the one one. <laughs> well, there was more than one, but entirely sure where the other one went. Hold on. Got him. There he is. Look at that. Video? Boy. Okay, there you go. So we've got a little baby here. He's got this interesting little color patch right here too, so he's not quite as faded as some of the others are. that earless lizards are actually phrynosomatids. This means that they're related to the horn lizards that everybody thinks are so fat and adorable, like we saw at the beginning of the video. And if you look at their body plan, it actually kind of fits. Anyway, after we released this guy, um, that was four earless lizards that we'd found within the space of maybe an hour or so. And at this point, the sun was beginning to go down. 
we continued just kind of walking around enjoying uh, the fading light. The environment of the white sands from afternoon to evening are two completely different worlds. And as the sun goes down, new species can often become active. So we left the central uh, dunes and started making our way out of the park as we were going to start cruising later that night and found a, a few other wildflowers and some other interesting creatures in the area along a boardwalk. So we've got this beetle here. You can see his tracks that came through from the sand. And then he's been digging in this hole here. He was sticking his butt up in the air. Usually I would think that was for collecting dew, but it's the wrong time of day for that. So I wonder if it's maybe a defense mechanism. Yep, it's a defense mechanism. He sees my hand moving, so he's raising up. So he's probably got a smelly defense chemicals to use. And this, a minuscule creature I can't believe I spotted in the sands. Got him. Got this little mantis here, he's so tiny. And he's also white, just like the rest of the sand here, so he's blending in too. That's a first for me out here as well. I've never seen mantises in the dunes. Wish we could see an adult, but since we got the baby, he's now over there. <laughs> there he goes. Running off that way. He's a... Uh, be cool to see an adult, because they're probably just as pale out here. And I don't know what species, but... Uh, there's actually several native ones that are down here, probably in the Stagmomantis genus. So, that's a cool find too. Cool. So we managed to get him on my hand here for a brief moment. You can just see how pale he is too. I have never seen a mantis that color before. That's really cool. And we'll let him back on the sand here. And there he goes. It's little things like these that show why it is imperative to always have your eyes open when you're out walking in uh, natural environments and always keep an eye out where you're stepping because there's always little tiny insects and other animals that could be all around underfoot and you never know what you might come across. Got another earless lizard as we're kind of leaving. This is one of the palest I've seen, I think. Could just be the background, but he is really, really pale. He'll probably move as I get closer, but... Look at you. I see almost no pattern on him, really. Something I haven't mentioned about these guys yet, and it may not be that this one is actually paler than the others, but they are actually capable of changing color slightly throughout the day to kind of match their environment. They get darker when they need to warm up and lighter as they need to cool down. And considering how hot this day was, this guy might have just paled out in order to cool off. Now, this was the last of the earless lizards that we saw right as the sun was going down. And unlike all the rest, he actually stuck around for us to watch for a little bit before uh, we headed out. Well, he's sitting really nicely for photos right in front of me. So we'll just let him sit right here. It's another male. Look at you. Hi. Interesting thing going on with your leg there, those patterns. Wonder if those are scabs or... Well, I'm not sure, but it's looking really cool here. Alright, we'll leave you be, dude. We've got tarantula right there crawling across the road. Alright, so we've got our first find of the night. It might not be a snake, but it's still something cool. We've got a big old tarantula out here. Not the same species as we find up in Colorado either. This is much larger and much darker. around and since he's out in the open like this I'm going to bet this is probably a male who is starting to come out uh, searching for females because usually the females will stay pretty close to or in their burrows for most of their lives so we'll get him no, we'll get you moving back this way dude
keep going. Keep going. There you go. All right. Should be good. So this is in fact a wandering male. The really long legs compared to the body are one telltale sign. And it was actually kind of a pain in the butt to find out what species this was because commonly this is referred to as the Arizona blonde tarantula because in many places these spiders actually have a really pale uh, colored or pale color to the hairs on their uh, abdomen and cephalothorax which makes them look kind of blonde or brownish in color and in particular the females are really light so but in a lot of places like southeast Arizona and throughout south uh, New Mexico the males that wander around are very dark to almost solid black and then just down the road after we found this guy, basically we turned around, uh, we found something else rather interesting. Going. All right, we got ourselves a vinegaroon out here. He's out feeling for prey. He sees Nathan moving, so he's all scared. Now, ready to attack. He'll spray vinegar out of that long whip at the end of his abdomen as his defense, because they don't have stingers, and not much that they can really bite you with, so they just act like they're tasting bad, basically. We got the car that's coming by. Okay, there he goes. So, this is also something that I've never seen before, too. So, really cool animal. We'll keep him moving off the road here. And then uh, keep looking for some other cool stuff. When my grandparents lived down in New Mexico, they would often tell me stories about the vinegar runes, uh, finding them in and around their house, and despite all those stories, I never saw them until, well, this night. Um, these guys are actually related to the true scorpions, as well as spiders, and they're in a group called the whip scorpions, which are found throughout the tropics and subtropics of the world. Uh, the species in North America is Mastigoproctus giganteus. Um, however, there are a couple papers that are coming out that apparently suggest that this one in or arthropod may actually be seven or more different species. So we'll have to see where this one actually uh, falls out to eventually. And while these guys kind of look frightening, they're really completely harmless unless you happen to have a reaction to the vinegar, very strong vinegar that they secrete as a defense. Um, they don't have a stinger. They don't really have a means to bite, and even pinching with those front legs is kind of meh. They're not that great at doing it to people or anything, so there's not a whole lot that they can do to you. And they are also great as pest control. Some of the things that they most love to feed on are crickets and cockroaches. So if you don't like cockroaches, the vinegaroon is actually a good animal to have around. Now this was one of the last creatures that we got to see uh, this night. There was one more tarantula that showed up a little while later as we were driving around in the desert, but um, in this evening several big storms started sweeping through the lower uh, desert in New Mexico, and so snakes didn't decide to really come out, and most of the rest of the night was spent traveling to our next uh, destination. Still, while the Snakes Den shows overall a great day, still visiting some beautiful areas and still finding a lot of interesting wildlife throughout this uh, region. But of course, this was only day three out of uh, six full days that we were going to try and spend down in New Mexico, so there's a lot more to come. So certainly, if you'd like to see what's coming up, a lot more exciting stuff, uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, turn on the black button on YouTube, so that or the black bell, so that you don't miss anything coming up. And if you'd like to help support future uh, documentary videos like this, educational blogs and other things, as well as get some exclusive benefits back, consider becoming a supporter at patreon.com slash hcarlton. You can visit the website at carltoncarnivores.com where you can find the uh, website shop with all the plants and such that I grow and sell, uh, the access to the database, the blog, uh, all the information that you need to contact me, and if you don't feel like a monthly subscription at Patreon, you can always join at, or you can give a single one-time donation through coffee.com slash Carlton Carnivores. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos and photos and such, things that don't show up on YouTube but are shorter little blips and things that I am taking throughout the week, uh, you can always uh, follow me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok at Carlton Carnivores. 
But until next time, I'll leave you with this last little clip of the final tarantula of the night. And until next time, I'm Hawkin Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores. So we've got another tarantula out here, and this is a different looking one. I'm not entirely sure where he's going. He is large and he is black. Look at him go. And there he goes. Hopefully he'll continue off the road.